This just came in the mail. It is the mini flying lead harness from AEM for the Infinity. Um, you, they sold a couple different ones. Um, this pretty much has everything here that you need to get your, your car running. Also includes shielded wire for the cam and crank sensors. So this is what I'm gonna be building the harness from. I don't think it's gonna be easy, but I definitely think this makes it a little bit easier than it would be doing it from scratch. All right, the plan is to put this harness down, this end back about where it's going to be in the car. And then I'm gonna drape all these wires where they go out here. Oh, please tell me this fits through here. All right, just kidding. The connector does fit down in there. It's just a tight fit. It comes with a pre-terminated wideband connector. It's incredibly long since the wideband will be right there. I don't know if I'll trim this or, or what. All of the uh, wires are labeled. So, for example, that is injector four. So the coils. I think this bundle is all the power stuff that I'm gonna tie into the OEM fuse box. This bundle here is all your sensors, so TPS, air temp, map sensor, uh, tachometer, so I'll have to pull that back and put it inside the cabin, um, stuff like that. All right, it's a couple days later here. This was kind of getting out of control because I had to start adding some wires in for all of the inputs and outputs that I need. Um, the, the harness comes with 10 additional leads and two shielded leads for your cam and crank. Um, those 10 additional leads are not labeled and I realized I started using painter's tape to label them and I, it was going to be a mess. So I went out and got a label maker here and this is really cool. These Dymo label makers you can buy heat shrink that it will print directly onto. So I'm starting to print some labels here. I'm going to put them at both ends like this will be my knock sensor so I'll have a have a label down where it connects to the ECU and one on the end of it where I'll be terminating it. And I'll probably end up labeling the entire harness when I'm done so I know like where every plug goes and whatnot. So I'm going through figuring out all the ins and outs, creating the labels, getting these wires ready. I'll probably pull the harness back out of the car and go ahead and pin these in and mark down on a spreadsheet where each pin goes on the ECU and then put it back all in there and finally start actually terminating all of the wires. Over here at my computer, I have the base map pulled up and I'm setting up all of the inputs and outputs as I pin out these, these wires. I also have the instructions that it came with. I'm writing down any inputs and outputs that I'm adding. And I'm also, as I label these, I'm putting the pin number right onto the label. I'm about to pull the harness back out of the car. There's quite a few of these that I know are not gonna be near as long as they currently are. So I'm just gonna go ahead and trim them back some. Um, this isn't gonna be their final length, but I think it will be more realistic than they are now. I have my factory harness laid out on the table here. I have been reviewing this now for several days and trying to read as much as possible. Some good information out there on the pinout of these plugs. Specifically concerned about this stuff that um, really goes to the body and the dash and all of that. This orange plug specifically, I can't find it for sale anywhere online. I was able to purchase a new boot for my new harness. This was 50 bucks, but I think it'll be nice to have a new one. Anyways, I've come to the decision that really the only way to get this done is to cut these plugs and use them on my harness, which I'm very hesitant to do, but I think it's my only option at this point. So, I guess I'm gonna rip the Band-Aid off and cut these body side plugs off so I can continue working on my harness. 
There we go. Just finished going through both of the chassis connectors or body connectors that I know that I need. Went ahead and labeled the wires that I'm gonna be using. That's a ground. It's gonna be my coil power. Since I'm using the factory fuse box, might as well use those factory circuits. I've um, got quite a few things in this 38 pin orange connector. Um, I didn't de-pin these, I just bundled up what I'm not using just in case I do need any of those wires. I won't have to re-pin them in. There's a lot going on in this one, as you can see. So hopefully I got everything labeled correctly. I was double checking myself. It's somewhat easy to get lost when you're looking at this 38 pin connector and trying to determine what pin you're looking at, especially since I don't have the color code for the wiring, but pretty confident that I have everything labeled correctly. So now I'm gonna start integrating that with the Infinity harness. Okay, I have the harness laid back on the car. I have the plug inside exactly where it's gonna be. Um, I'm turning everything to length and then it'll come back off the car and I'll start looming it and then terminating the ends. I do need to run a couple more uh, power leads here, but it, it's getting close to the point where I can start looming it. All right, it's probably not easy to tell in this video, but this is like week two of working on this thing. It's very intimidating being the first time I've done this and I need to get it right the first time because I know it will be very hard to troubleshoot this thing in the car, especially once it's all loomed. I just got some new tools to make this maybe a little bit easier. Got some new Klein wire strippers. These things are next level for stripping uh, wires. Also changing up the terminal connectors or the wire connectors I'm using. Um, these work really nicely to connect wires together uninsulated using like a Molex crimper. There are quite a few stock functions I want to maintain. Uh, the Supra, if you didn't know, it has proportional power steering. So above a certain mile per hour, the steering rack actually has like a solenoid in it to change the steering feel. It has the low oil pressure and the low oil level light on the dash. I'm gonna just hook those straight up to the stock sensors. They're not gonna be ran through the Infinity at all. There's also some transmission functions that we're gonna need. The reverse switch, obviously. And then I'm using the stock AC relay. It uses a speed sensor that talks back to, I guess there's a, an air conditioning ECU in the car somewhere. To control all of that, so I'm, I'm running all of these stock functions as they were intended by Toyota, which means I had to cut a bunch of wire and now I'm about to label it and run it through the loom. This is the last piece I need before I think I can sit the loom in the car and maybe start terminating it in the car. Here's the final product. Nice chunk of wire in here just to run the, some of the stock stuff on the car. Oh man, I hope the end is in sight of actually adding wires to this harness. Don't ever make a harness. 
Too much work. It's all in good fun. Oh, we forgot a wire. I have to pull it back out of there. All right, that's good stuff. This is gonna be a two part video of making this harness because I don't wanna publish like a 30 minute long video of me making this thing. In the next one, I'm gonna start terminating it and putting all the uh, braid on it and the heat shrink and maybe testing it in the car. So stay tuned for that. Thanks for watching.